In order to build a website, you're going to want to work with some media. Images will really enhance the website and improve your messaging. In WordPress, you'll be using something called the Media Library. This is a centralized storage location and management system for all the media files that you upload into your website. This repository for all of your images, videos, audio files, and documents are stored within the WordPress website. You'll have easy access to be able to reuse any media file that you've previous upload. This will save you time and effort. You can organize your media files using folders, tags, and search filters. Within WordPress, you even have some basic edits that you can perform on images. This would be things such as cropping, resizing, and rotating. The media library will seamlessly integrate with the WordPress editor, making it easy to add media to your posts, pages, and other website content. In simpler terms, you can think of the media library as a digital photo album for your website. You upload your photos and other media to the library and then you can easily insert them into your website content whenever you need them. Let's take a look at how we can add media into our WordPress website. From the dashboard, you're going to go to the media section. As you can see, we have a library and an option to add new media files. Currently, our library is completely empty because we have not yet added anything into our WordPress website. You can also access the Add New Media File section by clicking the button inside of the library. I'll do that now. Now you'll be able to either drag media right into the WordPress library, or you can click Select Files and navigate to a location on your computer where you have media that you want to include in your website. I am currently looking inside of a folder that I've made that contains a bunch of different file types that I'd like to use on my website. As you can currently see, some of the images are grayed out. These happen to be all of the SVG images. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. WordPress does not allow uploading SVG files to the media library because SVGs are actually made up of code and it is possible that they could contain malicious code. By default, you cannot use SVGs, but there is a workaround which will enable us to be able to use SVGs, and I will share that with you in an upcoming video. For now, I'm going to select all of the other media types that I happen to have in this folder, and I'll click Open. As you can see, all of the media files are going to be quickly uploaded into my WordPress website. I am currently viewing the media in this grid view, which will give me a small preview of all of the media files. You can also view the media files by going into list view. This is going to give you information about the image, the original file name, as well as edit, delete, view, copy the URL or download the file. I'm gonna go back into the grid layout and I will click on one of my images. When you click on one of the images, you're going to see the WordPress metadata section be presented. This allows you to add additional information to your images that can help with SEO and accessibility. The alt text option is really important for any image that is part of the website that should have some meaningful content in case the image does not show up or for someone viewing your website that cannot actually see the website. The alternative text should be a short description that describes the image. The title allows you to search the image later in the media library. So if you want to be able to use the search features, you'll probably want to assign a more meaningful title. Unless, of course, you've named your images with meaningful names. In that case, the title comes directly from the original name of the image. The caption area is going to show up on the blog post or other sections of the website that 
utilize the caption feature. We will look at this a little bit later on in our course. The description is an optional area where you can add further information that describes the image. If you want to do this on multiple images, you can click the arrow buttons up at the top to cycle through the images. I generally try to add alt text to all of my images to help with accessibility and usability. When you're done adding this information, you can simply click the X to close this window. That's going to return us to the default media library. The next thing I want to show you how to do is how you can edit images within WordPress. It is worth mentioning that the editing options are pretty minimal, but in a pinch, you might just need to crop or scale an image. Once you click on an image, you will have the option to edit the image. In addition, if you had clicked on edit more details, which is going to take you to an area where you can again, add alt text, a caption and a description. You can also edit the image from here. Once you're in the edit image area, you'll have the option to crop scale and rotate the image. It is recommended that you scale the image first before you do any cropping or rotating. It's also worth noting that you can only scale images down. You cannot scale them up. So if I wanted to make this image about half the size of the original, I can simply change the dimensions. And instead of having my width be 2000 pixels, I could change this to a thousand. As you see, the height is going to automatically change. And this is keeping with the original aspect ratio of the image as it was first uploaded into our website. Once you're happy with the amount of scaling, you can click the scale button and this will then scale the image. At this point, if you wanted to crop the image, you would click the crop button. You'll see a bounding box and you can grab the corners of this box and crop the image. You can also numerically crop an image if you have a specific value that you want to set it to. Once you're happy with the cropping, you will click apply crop. Now my image has been both scaled and cropped. The image rotation allows you to rotate the image left or right by 90 degrees, rotate it 180 degrees, or you can flip it vertically or horizontally. You do have an undo button, which will allow you to step back one step at a time. Now at this point, I'm ready to save my edits but you can see that the save edit button is grayed out. For some reason, this is a little glitch in WordPress and what we need to do is make some sort of change so we can get this save edit button to come back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate my image one more time. As you can see, the save edit button is now back and I'll click this to accept these changes and save these edits. Now my image has been saved with the changes that we've specified. I'll need to click update to commit these changes to WordPress. And at this point, my changes have been completed and I can return to the media library. If we go ahead and click on this image, you will see that all of the changes that we've specified have been applied to the image. And once again, we can return to edit image and make any additional changes, or we have the option to restore the original image. This will allow us to restore the image back to the state of the image when we uploaded it to the website. I'm going to do that now. And you can see all of my changes have been deleted. I'm going to close this window because the image was restored successfully. And if we look at the image or click on it, it is returned back to its original state. The edit image options are fairly simple, and I do recommend making changes in your image editing application rather than using WordPress. But in a pinch, these may be useful if you just need to quickly scale something down a little bit or crop something out of an image. 
I also recommend that you optimize your images before you upload them to WordPress. This is going to improve your page load times. Unoptimized images have larger file sizes, which will significantly slow down your website's loading speed. You will also experience improved SEO if your images are optimized because search engines will prioritize fast loading websites. In addition, you can reduce bandwidth usage, which will be great for mobile users, and you will enhance the user experience. You can easily add any kind of JPEG, PNG, or GIF file into WordPress. As for videos, you can add MP4s, MOVs, AVIs, and WMVs, and you can also add audio files like MP3s or WAV files. Finally, you can add documents such as PDFs, DOCs, and even Excel files. These are less common, but you can store these documents within your WordPress website and then link to them. By storing all of your media files in the media library, you can easily manage, organize, and reuse them throughout your website. 